Verse number 15, This thou knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. So he's explaining to Timothy at this point, you know, everybody is turned away from me. He's in prison, right? People don't want to have anything to do with him now. And he's saying, they've all turned around, uh, away from me. He says, e basically saying, even Phygelus and Hermogenes, like everyone's just turned their back on me. Verse 16, the Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. He's saying, at least I had Onesiphorus. At least I had him who wasn't ashamed of the work that I was doing. He would come and visit me in prison. He would come and help me and refresh me and was not afraid to be seen publicly going and talking to this criminal, you know, Paul. And we ought not to be ashamed. I, I remember a long time ago when I was going to Faithful Word Baptist Church and when like the first time they got put in the news and, and of course a big hit piece and it's like on display and there's oh there's this hate preacher and all this other stuff there were a couple people I think that ended up dropping out because they couldn't take the heat and would end up being ashamed of the man of God that's standing up and just standing for righteousness and didn't want to have any association. And some people didn't quit, but they stayed out of church for a couple of weeks and then would come back. And it's like, look, don't be ashamed of what this guy's doing. Don't turn your back on him after all the good that he's done and all the, the, the hard work that he's doing. And now when persecution comes, think that, oh, well, maybe he could just tone it down a little bit. No. That's not what you're supposed to do. You need to stand right there with that man of God. Stand with him and, and be there all the way and be like Onesiphorus and don't be ashamed of the chain. Don't be ashamed of the, of the you know, negative press that's going to come that way. Stand there boldly and refresh the man of God that is being persecuted for righteousness sake. Verse number 17, but when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. See, here's someone who loves Paul and doesn't, he's not worried about what the world's going to think or what anyone's going to think about him visiting him in prison. That's the right thing to do. Flip over to chapter 2, verse number 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So, he, he again, He's encouraging him to be strengthened, to be strong. He's giving him the warnings. He's telling them this is what's going to happen, essentially. When there's problems come your way, don't be afraid. You've got power. You've got the gift of God. God has given us a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. And then again, reiterating in verse number one in chapter two, be strong. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. He's saying, we got to keep this going. This doesn't stop with the Apostle Paul. He's saying, look, I have trained you. Now you train other people and we got to keep this going. We need to continue because as the Apostle Paul is in prison, the amount of work that he can do is hampered. I mean, he's still doing good. He's still writing down letters. He's sending to people. He's encouraging people. He's witnessing to whoever he can in prison. But it's still, he's, he's withheld. So he said, we need to just get more people out in the field. We need to get more people trained. It's never all about one person. Unless you're talking about Jesus Christ. That's who it's all about. But it's not any one man. You cannot allow yourself to live and die by one man. No matter how great that person is. The Apostle Paul, great, great example, great person to follow. But you know what? If you put all of your, your you know, stock and everything in just him, oh, well, now he's arrested. Now what am I going to do? Well, I guess I'm just going to go quit. No. We need to keep moving forward. If he's taken out, well, we're not living and dying by Paul. We're living for the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's saying we need to keep training more men.